Brian here from quantlabs.net. I just want to let people know it's 24 hours later that we've posted a, a survey on the direction of platforms that we should be going with. We've looked enough at uh, TradeLink. It can work, but it's got its problems in terms of latency and uh, probably lots of bugs that we can expect out of an open source project. Not knocking it, but it's a very good product. Um, it has really good community support and pretty good uh, documentation to get you started. Um, it's good for a layman uh, who's wanting to get into, you know, high, no, not, I won't say high speed, high frequency trading, but it's potential, has a potential for it um, compared to other paid products. Now, clearly on this survey, uh, there's a lot of people wanting to know about FPGA and the uh, the option of FPGA as a hardware solution for true HFT. Now, I'm not sure the people that we're dealing with, if they're coming in from a large bank with, uh, I don't know, a $200 million budget, or are we talking of from a guy who hears about high frequency trading and it pays well in a job and he lives in a garage and he wants to do it. So I'm not sure what the range of people I'm dealing with that are interested in this, but there's clearly um, people interested in it. Now, because of this, I've already started uh, my initial research on it. And I just wanted to state some of the caveats that come with it. Some people think that it's a fairly cheap option. It's a one-time fee, yes. But there are some other things that you need to be aware of. First, the board, if it's from Xilinx or Altera, you're looking at, let's say if you want a Vertex 6, 7, you're looking at at least three, maybe $5,000 for one board. The higher-end boards go for around $10,000 a piece, okay? That's just the board. Then... You also have to, depending upon how you want to synthesize your algorithm or your model or whatever you're going to synthesize on the board, or basically copy onto it, um, there's different ways to go about it. Now, I'm by no means an expert at it. I'm just basing upon what I'm researching and uh, some assumptions here, so it might be a little dangerous for me to say this. But the nice thing with MATLAB is this can be done, and it can be generated, uh, co-generated onto an FPGA board through... Simulink uh, through the HDL coder. Now that's not an easy option to get set up. You're looking at about seven, eight, nine, maybe ten k uh, to to get started. Um, now that's an option that's worth uh, pursuing because it's probably the easier way to do it, where you can visually generate your model from Simulink and then synthesize it right onto the board through various different means. But there's other steps that you should be aware of. First, there's validation. And there's a simulation check that you need to test when you run your um, your simulation in Simulink. Uh, you need to make sure it pretty well comes close to non-zero, let's put it that way, or, or, or close to zero, referencing no issues, no variance on the performance on that. And that will be run through a, a third-party solution called like Model Sim. Now, I could be wrong about this Model Sim. There's a there's an express or slash student version which may be free. I don't know what the limitations of that are, but the pricing that I've seen, it's up to $20,000 just for that one piece of software. So that's kind of a crucial thing you want to, um, you, you, you do need in your arsenal of doing a FPGA development. Now the other thing is with FPGA, you all, uh, as I said, hopefully you, you know what I'm referring to here, there's two mainstream uh, board manufacturers, Xilinx and Altera. Uh, I've been more focusing on the Xilinx, um, but I wouldn't be surprised that Altera is probably in the same, uh, the same um, uh, price range. On top of that, part of the Simulink blocks that you would probably need are blocks from whatever manufacturer you go with, if it's from Xilinx or um, the Altera. So they have these suites that you can buy for, I'm estimating about $1,000 to get you up and running from uh, with the world of Simulink and being able to use th those code blocks as part of those um, solutions. That's probably something I would go instead of going an alternative route. It's pretty hair pulling. Um, if you're just starting out and you're, let's say, that garage operator um, trying to just do trading, uh, if you are in the range of starting capital of, of minimum half a million, million for sure, I would probably get FPGA is a definite option. Also, um, if not, it's like kind of like swatting a fly with a hedge 
with a uh, sledgehammer. So obviously it's a little unrealistic, as you can imagine. Now, it doesn't stop me from thinking Simulink's a good option because you can still generate uh, C and C++ code from it through the uh, uh, Simulink coder. So that's an option. Now the question then becomes, oh, before, let's forget the C and C++ for now. Let's also talk about the market data, how you, once you get your algorithm burnt or synthesized on the board and you have a working model on your board, you still need a market data handler to handle the incoming data. Because in Simulink, you're going to use some kind of way to inflow, use uh, some kind of data as inflow into your Simulink model. Typically, that will be just straight from the workspace. So you'll have another means of getting that data into uh, your Simulink model. That's easy. But once you deploy it into more of a production environment right on the FPGA board, um, how do you get that market data into the board? Now, it's not an easy path to go down. There's probably one or two uh, vendors that specialize in this, and also uh, they also include um, your order book uh, as well. So there's one company called Nova Sparks that I've looked into, but both both companies I've looked at are um, subscription-based. So subscription-based probably would be no different than Onyx S or some of the other fixed engines that you can um, subscribe to each month, which range from two to $3,000 all the way up to $10,000. From what I've been told from my quant friend in London, you want the $10,000 option because it has less headaches. Surprisingly, yes, I know, but uh, the late there is latency built into the lower end fixed engines. So I can't say how this Nova Sparks option would work uh, if there's latency. I don't think there is from what the president's been saying. Uh, Eves, Charles, funny enough, it's a lot of French people in, uh, doing this stuff. Um, but regardless, um, that's going to be another couple, probably a couple of grand options. So one way or another, you're going to be paying the piper each month to do this stuff, um, which I, I'm in a position right now where I'm just not capable of doing that because I, I say that because I'm just like no different than anybody else just starting out so plus I don't have a million dollars burning in my pocket right now so at the end of the day um, it's an option for sure but still um, staying in the world of simulating it's good uh, just do the fact that uh, you can still co-generate into C or C++ from the same model which is good so, you know, we're still looking at different solutions, but I'm going to be introducing one other piece of software that I'm surprised no one's picked off on that service. It's called Deltix, DCS, uh, Deltix Cloud Services. Uh, I'll be showcasing that and just doing a, a, a general overview of it. Um, so that may be an option, um, and uh, maybe some other may, options may come out of that. But I can tell you that that piece of software is very, very powerful and very, very fast, and... It's quite easy to use. Now, there was another option that came out um, called uh, for Modulus Financial Engineering, called M4. I uh, put up the package uh, link to it on the sales page for package number two, which gives you something like two million uh, lines of source code. Um, it's quite advanced. There's a lot of goodies in there. Um, I can confirm that the price would be $15,000. For, for that solution, and it, it's something for people that are looking for a smaller bite-sized chunk, that might be a decent option. Um, so those are the various options to still play with. Um, FPGA is something I'd love to do, but there are the caveats, so I'm putting this video together because of that, just letting people know. Got any questions, let me know. Talk to you later.